George D. Warner, an instructional technology coordinator for the Sheboygan Area School District, had an idea for a school that focused on personalized learning through innovation and technology. By 2007, the computer age was advancing quickly, and George recognized that young people were growing along with it. Originally called Face-to-Face -face High School, the idea began to take off, and just as the program was developing, George passed away. In 2009, the school was renamed in his honor. George was a visionary, and today we've grown to over 120 students. And in 2011, George D. Warner Middle School opened to the public. Most of our students are here learning on a daily basis, and we do have some students that choose the online approach, but uh, most are here on a daily basis, and, and that kind of transitions into Warner High School as what we would call a gradual release of responsibility. So students, as they go through middle school, learn that time management and those uh, responsibility skills, and by the time they get to the high school, they're typically ready for that flexible schedule and ready to be successful. One of the things we're very proud of here at Warner Middle School is our achievement. Our students for the second year in a row are leading the district in growth with their MAPS test scores, which is the measure of academic progress, which means the average kid is expected to grow three to four points in MAPS. Our kids grew nine points last year in math and 8.2 in reading, which led the district. And that helps us know that what we're doing is actually working and it's really good for our kids. For each student that enters our school, we set up a personalized meeting at the beginning of the school year and we meet with every child, both of us together, where we sit down with the child and the parent for about half an hour and we have a series of interview questions that helps us get to know the student's best learning style, how they like to work, um, what problems they may have had in school, why they're coming to our school as opposed to a different school. Halfway through fifth grade, we're kind of scratching our heads being like, what are we what going to do? do? Yeah. You know, we didn't we'd see an option at that time, but then... When it came out, we're like, this is it. This is the option. Yeah. Elliot's ability is enough to be comfortable with trying something else, you know, um, that he, he could, he's going to do well wherever he goes. Um, but we're trying to make sure it was, he's going to do great. And then, and then he has. I mean, this has been a great experience for three years. Definitely. Would, I mean, <laughs> we, we really consider it a blessing. We personalize our education to them. We want to make sure that they're going to be successful. So not only do we have their MAP scores to work from for their language arts and their math, but because of our small school environment, we know them so well, we can differentiate within our face-to-face -face classes to meet students at their readiness levels. We actually combine elements of traditional face-to-face -face instruction with personalized online instruction. For example, when your student first comes in, we will give them the MAPS test. We take their scores and we customize their language arts and math to their specific levels. Um, students may come in in seventh grade and they may be performing at an eighth grade level in math. We are free to put them at eighth grade level. We actually even have the freedom if they come in in seventh grade and test at a high school level to provide them with high school level math courses online. Yes, I am in English 2, which is 10th grade English. Algebra 2, and that would be my third credit in high school math, and then English 2, which is my second credit in high school English. I am taking freshman English, and that especially helps because the English I was doing, it gets kind of boring after a while because you already know all the stuff. All my classes are in 8th grade, and I'm in 8th grade except for Algebra 1, which is in 9th grade, so... In language arts, I'm doing English 1, which is ninth grade, so I'm already doing that schoolwork, and I'm hopefully going to get to English 2 this year, so then I'll already have two of my years of English done. I'm taking sophomore English, and I think I'm a year ahead in math. I feel pretty good about it because if I go to Warner High School, then I could probably graduate in two years for four years of high school. One of the components with online learning is every student that comes to Warner Middle School gets their own Chromebook. And that Chromebook goes with them home, it goes with them on vacation. If they're homesick, they still have the ability to do work from home for their math and their language arts online. Well, one of, one of the things that really attracted him to Warner was the fact that they used the Chromebook uh, and issued a Chromebook to him, his own Chromebook that he goes back and forward from school with. Uh, gives them some uh, autonomy uh, with regards to 
having access to a computer, having access to email and some of the <clears throat> learning platforms that they use. The future is going to be even more heavily supported by technology, so it's important to get them started on some of these things. In addition to the online instruction, we do face-to-face -face classes. I teach social studies face-to-face -face in a traditional format. Kids come in, they take notes, they create projects, while Vicki teaches science uh, in a traditional science way. We have the science lab in back. They're always dissecting things, using water guns, things like that. So you may not know this, but one of the strictest industries in America is the cheese industry. Wisconsin has made Project-based learning is a component of our school where each student picks a topic every quarter and during that quarter they research that topic fully. It's almost like those high school papers that we can remember, those early college papers that we can remember where kids have to go, they have to develop resources, they have to write a, a full detailed research paper. They have to present their paper to their advisory in their class and they have to make a four to ten minute speech about their paper. Um, they also have to provide an artifact that illustrates what they learned about or illustrates a process that they learned while they were learning. So some kids paint, some kids play the piano, some kids bake cakes that show what they did, some kids make cheese. You think cheese would be like a really simple thing to make, but it's actually one of the most difficult things I've ever done for PPL and in my life because it takes hours and hours and a lot of patience. When we were looking for a school for Jacob, he said to me, I don't want to be in a classroom where every kid is assigned the same project. And so there'll be 30 projects all the same. We're all just doing the same thing. I want to be able to do some things that I want to be able to do. Any school can do research and, you know, any classroom can do that. But the fact that they have to design the artifact or come up with the artifact takes a lot of real life skills. A really neat component of, of our PBL is the kids become very supportive of each other. They help each other practice. When um, they give their speeches, they're really encouraging to each other to get up there and get it done. Um, and they do this four times a year. Um, a lot of schools have project-based learning weaved within their curriculum, where ours is a separate class, and they work on this project every single day throughout the quarter. So it's a pretty big effort on everybody's part to get that done. Kids have many deadlines that they have to, to meet, and they, they are held accountable the whole way through so that they are sure to have their product at the end of the quarter. One of the components of our school that we really find important is that we have small class size. We only have about 45 students here at our school, so each student is known. Nobody is under the radar. We don't have a whole lot of discipline problems because nobody gets away with anything because there are so few kids and we are with them all day long. Um, for example, the children who are in my advisory have me as their teacher for five hours a day. So by the end of the year, I really know what's going on with them and they know what's going on with me and um, the next year they come back and we start the process all over again. <laughs> One of the things about being in a small school is we actually have all of our grades mixed together. Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders are all together in classes throughout the day and it's actually really neat to see some of the kids who've been here three years how my eighth graders will step up and help our sixth graders or how the sixth graders excitement is kind of contagious for the eighth graders. They really do help each other out and it really has been a really cool learning environment with having blended grades. I was diagnosed with POTS and CVS when I was in third grade and I went to public schools until sixth grade. Then I decided to come to Warner a couple weeks after I went to seventh grade because I was continuously getting sick and missing school. My, I was falling behind and that was a big worry for me and my mother. So we've had a couple of students who have had severe m medical issues and so they come to school when they can. When they can't, they, they learn at home and we try to encourage the kids to come to school. I did come to school in the morning to do math and social studies but if I was feeling really ill, I could stay at home and do math, social studies, science, all the other classes on the computer. Emily being able to go to school this year with her diabetes was something I was really concerned about. She's not in a position yet where she has stable blood sugars. We're still having real low lows and real high highs and 
this is difficult to manage and I would not be able to do this with sending her to school if I didn't have the kind of support that I've got from these teachers. Now, they've never had a child in Warner who's had diabetes. And so we all sat down, met with the school nurse and met with several of her teachers and aides that are all part of her education. And we hammered out as best as we could the plan to be able to take care of Emily. She doesn't want to be making a lot of commotion. She doesn't want this to be distinguishing her from her classmates. And at first she didn't tell anybody that she had diabetes. She just didn't want them to know because she doesn't like being different. She's 12. She wants to worry about whether or not her you know, socks match and what color her coat is. She doesn't want to have to be worrying about her insulin and her finger pokes and, and her sugars being high or low or, or fixing that. And so that is one of the advantages of having her at Warner is because when she's sick, she has to be home or if her sugars are unmanageable, then she's got to be home. But it's distressing for her to be behind. If she was in a traditional school, then it would be okay, what did they cover? What happened here? How can we catch up? And it would be more stressful for Emily. And so being able to be home, stay up with her classes, she can email back and forth. They can let her know what it is that she might want to do here and be able to catch up with that. But they have so been there and met our needs for our family. And I got to just knock this off because I can't ball. <laughs> Are you being nice? Are you working hard? If the answer is no, then you're not doing your job. And um, kids are respectful of that. And it's kind of interesting because they have to look us in the eye so often and, and tell us the truth. They're getting very good at looking us in the eye and telling us the truth. I have lots of friends here. The kids here are really nice and everybody's just really kind here. Well, I, when at my old school, I was actually beat up a lot of times because I was always either slow or I didn't well, I was always behind in math or any other class. Like the whole year in sixth grade at my old school, I was yeah. behind in every single class. And then when I came here, I was caught up in everything and I'm actually a little bit ahead. A neat thing that we are able to do is because we're so informed about our kids is we can nip things like bullying in, in the bud right away. You know, we can get that taken care of. The kids who were bullied before will say, this is a family to me now. And that's really kind of a neat piece. Yeah, this place is kind of like a sanctuary for me. It's kind of like a home to me. I feel welcome here. Well, we feel very safe. We feel that he's in a very safe environment. Um, our older son had some issues at at the uh, middle school he went to before he went to George Warner. And so we've been kind of concerned about that. And I don't mean necessarily something bad physically happening, but just that he's in a safe and nurturing environment and somewhere where the teachers, you know, really, really care about him. It's it like warms our hearts to see how much they care and how much they love the children there. One of the things, again, you need to Warner Middle School is that we blend the four pillar model where we involve technology and online infused learning with the face-to-face -face classroom and the PBL. We also incorporate um, service learning. We do several projects. Last year we raised money for the Humane Society and we did a food drive for the Salvation Army. All projects the kids picked. The energy in this middle school is just great and we have awesome kids and they're fun and they like each other and they're nice to each other. absolutely thrilled with the education that my kids have gotten at Warner. We like the individual attention that our children have gotten there. Completely different experience and it's fantastic. Oh, we're very happy. We're absolutely delighted with the school. We're very, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clicked our heels if we could have, yeah. I love the personal touch. Uh, we like that uh, they progress at their own level. The teachers at Warner have been, I, I'm quite impressed. That they know my kid's name. So there's always something going on that isn't a book and a worksheet. Everybody thinks, oh, that's the online school. And it's really, I think it's really important for people to understand that that's not what it is about. It's not a gymnasium or it's not really a lunchroom. It's like, no, it's not like that. It's real learning. It's natural learning that requires them to be engaged and f working through the problem or finding the materials. There's a lot of interaction. There's a lot of uh, working with peers. This sounds perfect. We knew it was going to be a good experience, 
but I think it's been better than expected. They're happy, I'm happy. And if I'm happy, they're happy. It basically goes like that. It's a cycle of happiness. Because we're blended with a combination of online learning, face-to-face, -face, the kids do a lot of writing, they do a lot of reading, they do a lot of speaking. Our middle school graduates are prepared to go to any high school because they have a firm background in all of the different learning styles. Enroll today. Visit sheboygan.k12.wi.us slash Warner Middle or call 920-459-0945 George D. Warner Middle School for personalized learning.